So this past weekend, we had the Arkham Menard series head to Michigan to race at Berlin. And then we had the Xfinity series and the Craftsman Truck series at Nashville. Let's break down these races. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. So we had all three out this weekend. The truck series has been off. For a couple weeks, they make their return at Nashville. We had one driver completely dominate that race. But before we get to the truck series and Xfinity series at Nashville, we got to talk a little bit about this Arkham Menard series race. And to be honest, there's actually not that much to talk about. Starting on the pole for this event, and the driver that actually dominated pretty much the whole entire race was William Sawalic. Should not come as a huge surprise. He's a Big time performer anytime he gets into that into that number 18 for Joe Gibbs Racing. But then starting on his outside was Gavin Bichel. I haven't heard really anything about Gavin Bichel racing for Venturini in this event. Had a great qualifying run and ran pretty well throughout the event. A very good first start from Bichel. But like I said, there's honestly not that much to talk about. There was a couple of incidents during the race. Our, the Arkham Menard series has been really hit and miss i'd say all year one thing i do have to say i i was pretty upset because i was watching the race at berlin on fox sports one i think it was on fox sports one this week and i was watching the race they were advertising though the race is starting at berlin here soon on fox sports one and i'm like all right cool 40 50 laps left at this point or three quarters of the way through the race at this point and i see on twitter Tony Bridinger posts P6. Today I got P6. I'm like, how is she? She's racing right now. But no, I guess Flow Racing had the live feed for that race while Fox Sports 1 was delayed by, I'm not exactly sure how long it was delayed. I think it might have been one or two hours, which is just crazy to me. I cannot... That, yeah, I know they delay sometimes, but it's usually by like 12 hours or by like a whole day or something. It's something crazy. It's not usually like an hour or two because I thought I was watching the race live and actually the race had ended a long time ago and that was really unfortunate. I, that, I wish they advertised that better. They probably said it somewhere that it wasn't live, but all the advertising I saw on Fox and everything said that the race was at that time at berlin and i tuned in watched the race and it wasn't even live so i wish they made that more clear but like i said swalich dominated this event leading almost every lap i think it was after the first break where everybody comes down and makes those non-competitive pit stops in the arkham menard series they restarted around lap 80 and Andres Perez, the points leader currently in the Arca Menard series, looking for a victory, was able to actually take the lead away from William Sawalic and actually hold on to it for maybe five or ten laps and seemed pretty competitive. Didn't end up getting the win, obviously, though. Like I said, William Sawalic led almost every lap of this event, was completely dominant, gets another win on the season. All right, let's talk about this Craftsman Truck Series race at Nashville Super Speedway. You had Stuart Friesen get a pole. He hasn't gotten a pole in years. I think he only has maybe two or three career poles. Very, very impressive qualifying run from Friesen. But after he got the pole, I didn't really hear from him too much for the rest of the day. I think he ran top 10 most of the day. But he lost the lead on lap number one. And the driver that drove up to the lead was Christian Eckes. And there ended up being a big crash on lap number one, including Brett Holmes, amongst others. I think it was on three or four trucks on lap number one of this event. Christian Eckes leading the first lap in that number 19 
Napa Auto Parts machine. Another driver that seemed like they were going to be competing for a top five, if not the win, once again. And I think he's been one of the best stories, not just in the truck series, but in all of NASCAR this season, is Caden Honeycutt. Anytime he, anytime he gets into one of those Nice trucks, seems to perform. Was running in third, had to go to the garage early, early on in this event, which is really unfortunate. Seemed like he had really good pace. I don't know if he had winning pace. I don't think anybody was probably going to beat Eckes, but he most likely would have gotten a top five, top three in this event. Very, very unfortunate to see for Honeycutt, who only has a limited amount of starts this year, fighting for a full-time ride. And the way he's raced this season, I think it's pretty much guaranteed he's going to race full-time for somebody. By the way, Clint Boyer was in this race. Clint Boyer was doing pretty well. He has not been in a car in quite a long time. And he, he did well. He did well in practice, did well in qualifying, was doing really well in the race. And I was keeping a close eye on him. And he just, he seemed to slightly improve throughout the day. And Nashville is a, historically a great racetrack for him. He's won there multiple times in the Xfinity Series. And he was performing really well up until a restart around halfway through the event where he ended up getting into the back of his teammate Chase Purdy after a big checkup. It looked like to me Boyer got into Purdy's back bumper and then maybe Purdy stalled the car or something because he just wasn't going anywhere after Boyer got into the back of him and it just continued to be a chain reaction throughout the field. Dawson Cram ended up spinning around in the number 46 during this. And it was really unfortunate to see and Boyer was upset on the radio because he knew he had a car that if he kept on working all day, he could have gotten a top five, maybe even competed for a, a win at Nashville Super Speedway. And unfortunately, was not able to get it done. But after the race, he was able to confirm to a, to everybody that was curious about it that it's probably not going to be a one-off for him. He does not want to end it like that. I think those were his exact words. I'm going to play a little bit of his interview here in a second. But it was... Great, great to see Clint Boyer out there racing. And it's, he seems to really have the passion for it still. And clearly he can still perform. Has not been in a race car in general in quite a long time. And he only has a few starts in the Craftsman Truck Series. So in general, he's not that experienced in that race car. So a very impressive performance for sure. But, but take a quick listen to part of his interview at after this race. At Nashville Super Speedway. But hell no, racing. I've told people forever, racing's not fun. Winning's fun. That's why you do it. Give me back again. Yeah, thing? I can't quit like that. There's no way in hell. I'll find something. And just to get back to the race, there wasn't a lot of stuff noteworthy about this event. We had a couple of incidents, but Christian Eckes completely dominated this event, leading every single lap. Of the race that I think that I think they said it had to happen since 2018. Very impressive from Christian Eckes, an amazing performance from him. And he didn't even start on the pole. He started on row number two, drove up, took the lead, and did not look back all race long. I I, I got to make a little note though. It, it, I think the stages, the way the stages were set were set up, also really helped with that when it came to him leading the whole race, and that really upset me when i saw that in the pre-race i'm like really because the way they had it set up if it went green the whole entire way unless someone lost a tire or something silly there would have been no green flag pit stops the whole entire event and and nascar in my opinion need to fi figure out a way to fix that to at least have one green flag pit stop in the truck series in the xfinity series because these drivers need to practice it and also it shows more skill it puts the pit crews under a little bit of pressure so that was really unfortunate to see but great win from christian Eckes. but now let's get to probably the biggest story of this race i'd say and that was stefan parsons versus lane riggs i saw this coming from a mile away these two were going back and forth lap after lap they kept on putting the camera on these two because i I feel like they knew, as we all knew, that these two are probably going to wreck each other or do something stupid very soon. 
and that is what happened. Scott Riggs clearly wrecks Stefan Parsons intentionally. Disappointing to see, but then they ended up penalizing him for two laps, which the same thing happened to Carson Hosevar last season when he did this at Martinsville in the truck series. I, I don't know, though. I feel like I feel like it's always a different call when it comes to these intentional wrecks. It's I wish NASCAR were more consistent on everything. They need to have a they have a rule book, but they don't they don't really use it for for anything. It seems like I'm not disagreeing with the penalty. By the way, I actually kind of agree with the penalty. But I, I wish these things were clearer in the rule book on what you can and can't do. And if you do the things you're not supposed to do, what is the exact penalty for it? I, I, NASCAR need to figure that out. I, I think we've all been harping on them for many years about that. If you're going to call penalties, you got to make it clear in the rule book and everything that, hey, if you do this, this is the penalty you're going to get. Because it just seems very inconsistent. Overall, this seems pretty pretty consistent when you're comparing it to the host of our incident last year but then we had Carson host of our wreck Harrison Burton on Sunday under it might have been under caution a little bit different I guess but he, he didn't get parked for two laps or any like it's just it's very weird I wish NASCAR were more consistent and had it laid out for all of us to truly understand what is going on so we'll have to see if this carries on into the next event for the Craftsman Truck Series. Stefan Parsons, a young driver who's really trying to make it, has kind of jumped from ride to ride. Whatever ride is willing to give him an opportunity, he's willing to take it. I, I, haven't say, I haven't seen anything too bad out of him, but at the same time, I haven't seen anything too good. But like I said, he kind of jumps from ride to ride, so most of the rides that he has raced in have not been that competitive. And then you got Lane Riggs, who seemed like he had all the potential in the world last year when he raced the HendrickCars.com Chevrolet Silverado for, I think he raced for two or three races part-time last year. Really impressed. Ended up getting a full-time ride, replacing Zane Smith over at Front Row. And he just hasn't performed this season. I'm not saying all of a sudden he doesn't have potential. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. But he just hasn't lived up to my expectations that he had this that I had from this season. I consider the number thirty eight to be one of the best trucks in the field, and overall, he just hasn't performed at all. He's had a couple of races where he has top five, top ten speed, but then something like this happens. Usually, it's not of his own doing, but he he had top five speed throughout this event and pretty much took himself out of it because. He got heated because he got too upset with Stefan Parsons. So we'll have to see how the rest of the season goes for these two drivers and what the future holds. But two very young, passionate drivers just trying to make it in the sport. Now let's move on to the Xfinity Series race. And I'd say it was a pretty good one. Not one of the best Xfinity Series races we've seen this season. Honestly, when it came to the dirty air, I know dirty air really matters with any car, anywhere we go, obviously with the next-gen car, those cars get way more affected by the dirty air than the Xfinity Series cars. But it seemed like this past weekend at Nashville that the cars seemed to be even more affected by the dirty air than usual. It seemed like clean air even meant more this weekend than it usually does in the Xfinity Series. And it was an interesting thing to follow all race long to see what cars were truly fast and able to make passes through the field because there was a lot of passing don't get me wrong there was a lot of passing in this event but it seemed like when you got to that lead into the clean air clean air was definitely king but there was a couple of drivers who really stood out early in this event that had a lot of speed starting with our pole sitter ty gibbs ty gibbs started on the pole dominated the whole first stage after the first stage i'd say after he lost the lead he Fell off a little bit, but still had top 5 to top 10 speed throughout the rest of the afternoon. Then you had Cole Custer, who is still searching for that first win this season. I remember them talking about during, during the race. And I'm like, really? He doesn't, he doesn't have a win? Really? Because Cole Custer has been performing really well all season long, but has yet to go to victory lane. Last year's 
Xfinity Series champion, looking for that first win of the year. Had a lot of speed all race long. I'd say he was a top three, if not a top two race car throughout the whole day in that double zero. Then you got Justin Allgaier. Justin Allgaier, I think he he might have been the fastest car. I don't know. He could have been the fastest car. He might have been the third or fourth fastest car. But he just faced so many issues throughout the day, and it plagued him throughout the day, and he had to always make those comebacks. And at the end of things, it didn't go the way he planned or the way he hoped. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But it was really unfortunate to see, but it was a kind of, it was kind of a typical 2024 race day for Justin Allgaier, who seems like he has a fast car every week, a, a car that could, could contend for the win at minimum a top five, but he has to jump through hurdles throughout the whole entire event. Then the driver, I'd say, was probably the fastest driver all day until maybe that last run of the day they seemed to have fallen off maybe put in the wrong adjustment or something. But throughout 80, 90% of this event, in my opinion, the best driver and the fastest driver on the racetrack was A.J. Allmendinger. It was really great to see because Dinger has had a very difficult year, not just him, but colleague racing as a whole. And he was having a fantastic day, making a bunch of passes. Was one of those few drivers in the top three or four that were really able to do anything because I feel like the more clean air you had it was just even harder for the driver behind you to pass that's what was going on throughout the day once you got to like third or fourth a lot of drivers would just stall out and not be able to make a lot of passes but underneath those longer runs AJ Allmendinger just seemed to have way more speed than everybody else on those longer runs and just started to tear everybody apart it, I feel like it was really unlucky for him that he was never able to really have a great shot at the lead. I think he might have let a couple of laps, but never really had like, all right, I'm a second out in front. I'm There's not any certain strategies going on right now. I can just drive. I can just drive. If AJ had that moment out in front with the clean air and didn't have the pressures of pit stops and this and that, there's no doubt in my mind Almendinger would have won this race because he was just so fast. I was really impressed to see what he was doing. And then the last driver that ended up being our winner that was a big competitor throughout the day was John Hunter Nemechek. He ended up making his return to victory lane in the Xfinity Series. That was cool to see him winning with his old race team, essentially the number 20 car. I'd say John Hunter probably had the second or third best car. I It was kind of a toss-up for me when it came to him and Cole Custer. They were both really strong throughout the day. And I, I, I thought one of them was going to win when we were around halfway through this race. I was thinking that probably one of those two was going to win this race because they just have so much experience at winning in the Xfinity Series. They always seem to come out on top in these sort of situations. Ended up being John Hunter Nemechek, while Cole Custer still searches for that first win on the year. Right before we finish up here, I have to quickly go over those cool suit issues that we were having on Saturday. We had a lot of drivers, most notably Riley Herbst, have cool suit failures throughout the event. It was a very hot day at Nashville Super Speedway on Saturday, as it was on Sunday. Luckily, on Sunday, they got a rain delay to cool things down for a little bit. But Saturday seemed almost impossible for some of these drivers. It sounded like even... Riley Herbst was even beginning to get a little dizzy and his vision was beginning to mess up in the car while racing. And that is very, very scary. A very difficult and scary day for a lot of these race car drivers. Some of these drivers never experiencing something like that. A lot of these are young drivers with hardly any experience at the NASCAR level. Some of them have more experience than others. But a very tough day and it really shows. So it makes you really think cool suit versus no cool suit. If you use a cool suit and it works, that's great. That's amazing. It will be a big help to you. But then if it doesn't work, it's way worse than not having a cool suit. Because that water, especially when it fails. If it fails near, near the end of the race, you'll probably be okay. But if it fails like right at the start of the race like it did 
for Riley Herbst at Nashville, and it's a very hot and sunny day. By the end of that race, that water is almost boiling. It's so hot in those race cars, and I felt sorry for Riley. I was very impressed to see him make the cup race and didn't do I, I didn't really pay attention actually to see how well he did on performance but I did see pictures and people talking to him before the race and he seemed pretty good and healthy before the event because that was a very tough day for Riley at Nashville as it was for a lot of drivers and spotters a lot of spotters even wearing the cool suits this past weekend give me all your thoughts about the events we had this weekend what do you think about the race at Berlin what did you think about Christian Eckes dominating the Truck Series event? And what did you make of the race in the Xfinity Series at Nashville? All right, so this next week, the Truck Series is once again off after Nashville. Then you have the Xfinity Series heading to the Chicago Street Course. SVG, I'm, I'm hoping and I'm thinking he's going to win both the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series event this weekend. That should be a good one, to say the least. And then you have the ARCA West Series that's actually going to race on 4th of, July, 4th of July. I don't know if they do this every year, but they're actually racing on the 4th at Irwindale out here in California. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace. <laughs>